gas station log. It is August 11th, 2018. I just feel really frustrated today. How is it that you can do the math and on paper, it your budget can add up, but in practical life, it doesn't. I don't, I don't understand how that works. I don't know, so that's got me frustrated. Well, I guess I need to keep making the money, so let's, let's go rock the gas station. Gas station log, it's 420. Ugh, I'm, I'm, I'm struggling today. I'm having a hard day. I'm really hungry. Maybe it's because I need to eat something. I should probably go get something to eat. Maybe eating would help. My social anxiety is going crazy. I'm finding it more difficult to disregard the voices in my head, which, by the way, I deal with on a daily basis. <laughs> Let ye not be deceived. Um, I have to well I try to silence the voices I hear every day I hear them every single day they tell me that people just quit my job I can't do it that I should just kill people that I should just kill myself like I deal with that on a daily basis and I just shove it aside and say you're stupid you don't know what you're talking about, like, that's not how it is, it's not true, and I just dismiss it. Every day I do this. It's no different than if I had a group of people come up to me every day in my life and tell me people are stupid, blah, 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 do this, do that. It gets annoying after a while, but <laughs> such is the way it is. And as a Christian, I know better. I know that that is not God's plan for anything, for any of that to be true or to happen. But, like, I don't know. There are days like today where I'm finding it more difficult <laughs> to just shove it aside. The sad thing is, is, like, I've, I've talked to Jesus, well, I feel like Jesus has left me with some, some, some things to consider today. Number one, um, the, the verse in 2 Chronicles 7.14 where he talks about, um, if you call upon my name and pray, I will come heal your land. He suggested to me that that is not for anyone other than Israel. They had just dedicated the temple, and he was talking about how in back in Deuteronomy, all the things that he said, if you if you if you do what I say, I will bless you. If you don't do what I say, I will curse you. So verse 14 is the second half of the thought, which starts in verse 13, which talks about all the ways he would curse you if you don't do what I say. But if you repent of those things, I will come heal your land. And he suggested to me that we are looking for God to do something that he has no intention of doing. Look, we are in the last days, and in the last days, it is hopeless. The world, there's not going to be a revival. The world is going to shun God, throw him in the garbage, and he's not going to care or want it. Christians are going to become so marginalized that Jesus' only answer is to say, well, screw it, I'm pulling you out. Because it's going to get that bad. There is no hope for us in this world. It's over. And the clock is already ticking. We are living in an age where it's not ever going to get better until we get out. Which it may come as a surprise to you when, when I just say I just want out. When I, when I say I just want Jesus to come pull me out, that's why. 
It's because it's not ever going to get better. You people, you need to understand this. It's not ever going to get better. It's only going to get worse for us. The world is going to invent new ways to shun God and thumb their nose at him and his ways. At this point, the world is so ugly, I'm just counting the days hoping that the rapture comes today. Don't, please don't argue with me about whether the rapture is going to happen. There is sufficient biblical evidence, I could walk you through it, maybe I will sometime, on biblically why there is evidence for the rapture. Mainly because Paul describes it, not once, but twice, John illustrates it in the book of Revelation. I just want out. Because people apart from God are disgusting creatures, and I'm having a really hard time loving them today. I know we're supposed to. I'm just having a really hard time doing it. But, we need to wake up. America is not going to get better. We are on a path where the, the leftist, liberal, whatever people um, that want socialism and want everybody to be a victim in some kind of stupid group, like, they are going to slowly take over and we are going to be marginalized and considered dispendable and unsubstantial in favor of this new wave of ridiculously retarded stupid human thinking and that's the way it's gonna go and uh, and ultimately that is why Jesus is going to come back and put an end to it all is because it'll get so stupid that he cannot stand it anymore that's my worldview. That's that's how I see my life. Hopefully that gives you a little glimpse into my into the way I see the world around me. Alright, well, I'm gonna try and find me something to eat. I can only hope that'll help. Y'all have a good one. Another thing I forgot that Jesus, it was one of the little thoughts that Jesus put in my head today to consider and ponder, and so I'm going to ponder it with you. For whatever reason, I, I was struggling with the whole idea about getting on food stamps. I'm going to have to get on food stamps. It's the only way I can afford to get by and, you know, have enough spare money to pay more of my rent and more of you know, and, and more of my bills more often, have more money for all that. I'm going to have to get on food stamps. And one of the things, though, that God told me when I lost my SSI is I don't want you to be reliant on the government. Because one of these days, the government is going to fall. And I don't want you to be one of the people that doesn't know what to do and is running around hand arms flailing like I'm doing ah! running around in panic because they don't know how to take care of themselves and unfortunately this is the, the this is what happens when a people become so reliant on a government to take care of their every need that when the government is gone People don't know what to do, and they don't know how to take care of themselves because they've been reliant on the hand that feeds them. So, so I have been trying to live in such a way with the mentality that I have to trust Jesus to provide for myself entirely. And, well, the truth is, is I'm just going to have to get on food stamps. But one of the examples that he gave me was something that was pointed out a couple of years ago from the book of Exodus. Or no, 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 no. The book, this is the book of Genesis. The book of Genesis. Um, when Joseph was in Egypt. Now this is a 
particular passage of scripture that commonly gets overlooked or people don't read into it very well because it tends to be not incredibly interesting because it is about the economic policy of Egypt to feed people under Joseph's rule. Now, we all see Joseph as the guy who God elevated out of the prison. He was one of God's special people, and he, you know, pulled, pulled him out of the prison into the palace, and he set him um, as second in command over all of Egypt, because God is good. But then it goes on to describe um, how Joseph dealt with the famine that was in the land and how he coordinated this program to feed the people. And unfortunately, if you look at it with an economic lens, you see that what he implements is a kind of emergency state socialist ideal. He's like, we have all the food, and you need the food, and what ends up happening is they end up selling everything they have, and they end up offering basically to give over their very lives in order to be taken care of. And because he, here is a people that because of such the dire emergency, here is a people that gave up everything they had to be reliant on the Egyptian government for them to take care of their needs. And it paints a very grim picture of a people that became so dependent on Egypt to provide them for food and the program that Joseph had implemented that these people were willing to lay down their lives in order to be fed and that's kind of sad. I don't know I don't know about you but that scares me it scares me when I look at how the government is trying to feed people and take care of people I don't want to be in that or the next thing I know, I won't know how to do anything other than beg the government for help. Gas station log. It's 5.13. Guess what? I just went and got some food. Chicken and a biscuit. Chicken biscuit. You gotta love chicken biscuit. Dude, they have ribeye steaks today. Somebody loves me. And said, that boy needs some protein or something oh my gosh it seems like it's cooked a little like I never thought I would ever say this but it seems like it's cooked a little too well done so I just found out we are closing a little bit early today because they gotta like strip and wax the floors so um yeah I'm probably gonna be getting out of here a little bit early maybe so, alright, I'm gonna eat my food. Yay, my food, buddies! Mew, mew, mew! I love my food! I just want to show you this. When the deli makes a chicken biscuit, this is what you get. You get a big, fat chunk of chicken on a biscuit. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. That chicken and a biscuit was awesome. I don't know if it's the fact that I ate something, and maybe I probably needed to. But all of a sudden, like, people walk up here, and I'm starting to see them the way that God sees them again. I'm starting to see them as people, or sheep, if you will, that need a shepherd. And they need somebody to care about them, and they need somebody to love on them. And that's what Jesus wants to do. And that's what we're supposed to do. John uh, was noted. Basically, we kind of, we kind of, we kind of get an idea from the way that Jesus treats his disciples. He always saw Peter as the guy who had the potential to basically be the leader and the example for all the other disciples after he left. But we often see that Jesus' best friend was John. 
And likewise, I find it easy to accept that, that Jesus was probably John's best friend. And that it was mutual. And it's interesting, of all the disciples, John seemed to understand the most that Jesus loved people. And that he cared about people and cared for people. And wants us to do the same. He wants us to, to care about and care for people. And we can't forget that no matter how frustrated or mad we get at life or the world, we have to understand that Jesus wants us to love people the way that he loved people. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and love your neighbor as yourself. That's everybody. Everybody is your neighbor. Go love people today, buddies.